And uh, just, just the intention that we are feeling and what we're feeling at this time. And so we're so excited to transfer that to you today. We had an incredible um, trip and um, it's so great to have that many leaders come together, high level leaders, right? And just have lots of opportunities to talk and be present and just work it out, right? And we, we were in that space all week and, and just had some new ahas that felt super relevant for this season. So um, we wanted to bring that forward. Um, we're also welcome, welcome as you join in. We're so happy to have you. Um, we also just really are feeling called to Oman. We're like, as many people, like we want you with us to go experience the frankincense trail. Like last week was completely pivotal for us. Like I forget because we didn't have one the year before, um, the power of coming together with high level leaders. And many of you, you know, you could be coming together for the diamond retreat here in a couple of weeks, and that will be monumental. But there is something magic about this presidential trip. So just laying the foundation with that, um, they did. We had this night where they talked about it, and we snapped a couple of quick photos so that we could share a little bit more of what Oman might be like, feel like, taste like. Um, and it just, there was, there was some magic there. So yeah, I think that that's great. And we can kind of, we, um, the dates for the trip, just so you're tracking, you've got it on your vision board and you're moving forward are next June. And they are, let me get you the oh, exact. Yeah, this is actually the blue prez, which qualifying for um, blue at least once, everything, um, this is going to be happening December 6th through 9th in Florida, right? Um, and that will be an amazing collaboration as well. Sorry, the image quality is not great. Yeah, we were on a beach a little ways back, huh? Um, so keep that on your calendars going blue one time qualifies you for that. So it's a great stretch to have. Um, I believe you could qualify, um, through the end of October for that. And maybe even some exceptions with November. Um, so Oman and Jordan presidential trip Monday, June 20th through Sunday, June 26th of 2022. So friends, we are, we are going to Oman and we want to be with you. So we have been feeling this for a little while that if there was anyone that we should be coaching, there are people that want to go presidential. There are people that want to create. So we are kicking this off and this is our kickoff call. And we're going to do a monthly call going forward and we'll let you know right now because we're dialing into the right times, but um, we want to be here for kind of some high level, next level coaching, the kind of coaching you're not picking up every day. Okay. So um, we're going to share first, initially, those things that kind of stood out to us from the presidential trip and what we feel like is making the difference. And then we're going to open it up for you. And um, we want we want whatever your blocks are right now. We want whatever is coming up for you. We want to break through it, and that's our intention. And um, right, we're all power creators, so we can do that in fifty two minutes. Right? Let's do this. So, um, takeaways from the presidential trip, Andy. This was super clear for us. After the week we sat down, we're like, oh, we both had the same top two takeaways. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you a few different stories. And I want you to be um, looking for what do these stories have in common? 
okay? What did leaders do? And what was the mindset that led to um, the results? So um, the first story is Matt and Shantae Hall. These are two uh, dear friends that um, came to us when they were 21 years old or 22. And they said, hey, we want to do uh, this business with you. Um, and we were like, hey, we have pretty full plates right now. Maybe you could work <laughs> with one of our leaders, right? Yeah. So we, we kind of pushed them off, but they're like, no, we're, we're really serious. So we enrolled them. They actually built to Elite within a couple of months. They stayed Elite for a long time, then Premier. And about that time, they uh, so Shantae spoke Chinese and she heard about Founders Club in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And Greg Cook put a little bug in their ear. You really should move over there and build to uh, a founder's position in Hong Kong. So they dropped out of college. They sold their car and they moved into the tiniest little shared apartment room. So it was one of those deals where all you have is a bedroom and then everybody shares like a kitchen and a bathroom. And so their bedroom was so small, you had to like shimmy in between the wall and the bunk bed. And then their workspace was the bottom of the bunk bed. And then they shared a twin bed. So two, he's like six foot three. <laughs> and so he's huge. And, um, and it's a twin bed. Like that's, that's not even big enough for one person, let alone uh, a married couple. They were telling this story, right? We're all out at dinner. And they're telling the story and we're just like, oh my goodness, how much of this have we forgotten, right? The crazy of mm -hmm. it all. Yep. So um, they did get some enrollments while they were over there, but not very many. And they didn't want to tell us how much um, things weren't working over there. They were embarrassed. Yeah, they were embarrassed. Um, and so... Matt um, actually started losing a lot of weight while he was over there because because they were eating ramen every meal and um, and they would take prospects, um, you know, they, they have to meet at a cafe because they didn't have room in their apartment to meet with prospects. So they would um, offer them, they would pray that they didn't, the prospect didn't want to eat anything secretly, but then they would, um, if they did want something, they'd say, oh, the muffin's really good because it was the cheapest thing on the menu. And the, and the muffin was like $6. Um, so after, what was it four or five months in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. Matt wasn't looking too good. Um, and, and this is by his own telling. I'm, I'm not trying to throw him under the bus, but um, you know, he's a, a well-built guy, but this is what he looked like after several months in Hong Kong. Um, just uh, a skeleton of a guy, um, super, super, like nothing left mm -hmm. of, of Matt Hall. And so that's, that's kind of where they were when they came home. Um, you can really tell how, how thin his face was, mm -hmm. just his cheekbones sticking out. So they came home, um, didn't have much to show for their, their time over there. No builders. Um, only a couple LRPs. Mm -hmm. And what would most people do at that point? They'd throw in a towel, say, you know, doTERRA's nice, but it didn't work for us. Mm -hmm. But that's not what they did. Um, and while they were there, they tried all these different ways of contacting. They tried, you know, contact people on the street. Um, they tried going to health stores. They tried, um, we, had, we made some flyers for them about the business opportunity. And they, they would hand those out and talk to people. And then um, they came home and with, without much of a team, they just kept going and they kept trying new things. They tried some things online. They tried, um, gosh, probably 50 different ways yeah. of building the business. And some of them worked and most of them didn't, but they didn't quit. Um, it took them a few years to get to platinum and then a few more years to get to, to Blue, and now they're presidential and founders in Brazil, and they have about 70% um, of Brazil under them. 
So that's one story. The second story is- See if you can notice what these stories have in common, right. okay? So the second story is um, Elise Chedevi. Um Her husband is a tech genius by her telling. And, and so they decide they're gonna build a massive online oil store, like a super mega oil store. And they're gonna have so much volume in sales. They just need people to put that volume under. So join their team. They called their team, Team SEO, Search Engine Optimization because that's what they were gonna do. They were gonna make this site you know, so well um, tailored to the search engines that they were just gonna get gobs and gobs of traffic and sales. <laughs> well, guess how well that worked? The, the website part didn't work, but they did get a lot of people to sign up. Mm -hmm. If you talk to her whole original front line for her first presidential, that's where they all came from. Mm -hmm. Her next project was the calendar. Um, so she thought, hey, people make calendars with coupons all the time. Why don't we just make a doTERRA calendar and just pack it full of doTERRA coupons? And so, and, and she'd have to change it every month because the, the deals change every month. So she had printed up probably a couple thousand calendars and she had given to her, her builders and they would go out and they would knock doors and they would basically give away these, these calendars and then talk to people and see if they're interested in, in getting some oils and taking advantage of some of those deals. So how well do you think that worked? Not that well. It, but, you know, by any standard measurement, it was a complete failure. But because Elise was so um, charismatic and enthusiastic about it, um, she got a lot of people excited and she got builders engaged and it created enough energy that, that it, it actually got some builders involved. Um, so, and then we come to the last story, which is ours. Um, somebody, um, what was the thing, the, the crazy one that, that we did? The magazine or? There was a, oh, there was a direct mail thing. Yeah. So, uh, and this is actually, I'm glad we've got some Aussies on because this is in Australia. So we had another business that had, that we had had some customers over time in Australia. And so we thought, hey, since we have a relationship, we're going to do a direct mail piece. And so we made up postcards and um, we had one of our builders, I think it was Kelly Anderson. She was going over to, uh, we had her go to Australia because we were having Telmage at the time and doTERRA was doing a tour. And so we did a, a mailer in advance of her tour with corporate and we had people bring in their uh, postcard and redeem it for a free wild orange. And that would connect them to Kelly. In the back of the event, you know, right? watch for the girl in the orange dress. So then they could, you know, and, and we were expecting just gobs of people to just eat this up. There were hundreds, I'm sure we just miss them somehow. So right? guess how well that worked? Not so well. So um, we, I think we got one, was there one enrollment or none? I think <laughs> somebody enrolled, but they there were on was. a different team. Oh. <laughs> I think they ended up signing, signing up on a different team. So let me ask you, what do all these three stories have in common? Go ahead and unmute yourself and- Or pop it in the chat, whatever works and you could say we're all crazy right i feel like they all had failure in common at some point yeah totally mm -hmm. like you guys failed but you failed forward versus failing and just throwing in the towel right totally the thing too that that i want to point out um all these ideas failed, but the thing I want to focus on is we tried mm -hmm. so many different ways to make the business work. Like we, we were willing to fail, but before that we were willing to try totally different things. Mm -hmm. Like if you were to open up Empowered Success and look for recommendations on, you know, um, moving to a foreign country when you're elite, 
or launching a calendar program or launching a direct mail piece, are you going to find anything? Never, mm -hmm. like never, ever, ever. And so the, the thing that I, I took away from that is, you know, do classes work? Yes. And the top leaders in the company have consistently been willing to think outside the box mm -hmm. and, and forge new trails and, and just be a trailblazer. Um, and it's okay if, if most of those fail. I mean, we were joking with Elise that we probably had, of all of our thousands of ideas, 98% of them failed miserably. But there's something magical about the spirit of an entrepreneur. And, and that is that you get to create your own reality and you get to create your own business model, your own you know, value exchange. And, and the thing that I worry most about all systems, it, you know, not just empowered success, but all systems is they force people to get in the box. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it doesn't account for the fact that it requires outside the box thinking to get to the top. I looked at the top leaders, you know, David Shum and, you know, Dana Moore. And I mean, every single person on that trip, each one has their own style. Each one has their own methodology. And every one of them had done crazy, crazy things that looked crazy from the outside, almost stupid from the outside. That 98% did not matter, but the 2% was what created the movement and what made them that leader, right? And so as, as we reflected on, okay, what is needed right now to go next level? Like, honestly, there wasn't anybody there with any like, oh man, this is working. I, I kept thinking, okay, if we have enough conversations, we are just going to know that this works and this is the strategy. And then we can go full blast. We tell everybody and we just go, right? But there was nothing like that. But these common denominators of like, hey, be willing to try a thousand things, be willing to fail faster, be persistent. Um, be crazy enough to lead a movement. Like, you know, it's, it's kind of like the, um, don't you love that? Is it the Nike commercial that, that it's like, you know, when did Einstein say it's the crazy ones that it's Apple. It's Apple. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's an Apple commercial. I love that one. Right. Because it's the crazy ones. And literally on this trip, hearing hearing Matt and Shante talk and hearing Patrick and Elise in the van on the way to the airport, I'm like, we're freaking crazy. We're all crazy. And it takes a little crazy. The thing I noticed too, is that people who are willing to try crazy things, they, they believe, like they have such a high level of belief in the product and in the company opportunity that it doesn't like the methodology is immaterial. Like that's all just mechanics. Like the, the intention is so high and so clear that it doesn't matter if we're promoting team SEO or promoting classes or Zoom calls or um, you know direct mail, the, the certainty that these leaders bring to everything they've tried, mm -hmm. it engaged builders at some level. Mm -hmm. I mean, Kelly Anderson, even though we didn't get any signups for her on that um, Australia tour, guess what, what happened? She got engaged. And then she asked her next door neighbor to watch her kids just for a couple hours before her mom could show up. And guess what happened? His name is Rod Richardson. And he was Some so curious. Might know him. He was so curious about why she was going to Australia mm -hmm. that he started looking into the, the samples that he'd given she had given her, um, took a look at the comp plan. And by the time she got back from Australia, he was fully enrolled. Like he was all in, ready to go, like full pedal to the metal mm -hmm. with Zotera. With so absolutely the 
the message here is not just use a shock and approach. Mm -hmm. The message is up level your certainty and focus less on what's working, right? Like if, if you have certainty, then it, it's contagious. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's like a virus. It just, it spreads and people want to get on board. David Strong told the story about um, how he would, he would meet with people's prospects and he would say, hey, if you have a difficult prospect, bring them to me. If I can't enroll them on the spot, I'll give you, the builder, a free frankincense. That's how much certainty he has. Like he's willing to put $85, uh, you know, precious frankincense on the line uh, because he knows he can get the job done. His certainty is going to transfer. And, and I think this trickles down so much in our teams right now. It's easy. It's been easy to kind of like, Oh, we got to be safe. We got to be more careful. Um, because we're in these crazy tumultuous times. So just like rein in the energy and we can, we can sustain, right? Like this has been some of the crazy going on in my head is, you know, rein it in and we'll just play more moderate, right? But what is that doing? Like if somebody comes to me with a crazy idea and I'm like, oh, we, we really have to rein this in. You really need to just do this. When they're feeling something different, can you see how like I, as a leader, I am, I'm not becoming a multiplier. I'm becoming a diminisher in that moment, you know? And so I just saw, again, it was like, oh, wow you know, sometimes we feel such a stewardship, right? We want people to succeed. And when they're not just hitting the next rank and they're not hitting the income they need and they have real income needs, it's easy for us to start, you know, pulling back on the reins and trying to rein things in when the power is in the crazy. And yes, do we want to help them succeed and set them up for success? Absolutely. But let that, that brilliance that's within them, like the other part of this, well, this kind of flows right to number two, if you're okay going there. Yeah. Um, is that they've got to drive. And when you kill somebody's, um, when you kill someone's inspiration, their idea, what happens, right? It's like when you say, well, that doesn't work in doTERRA or something like that, right? These are just limiting beliefs that we're bringing and we're passing on to our people. Um, when most of the time I notice if we listen to them and that inspired action they had, and we kind of like um, bring it like, okay, let's start it here and let's dial that in and then let's take it next level, right? That we can be wise and we can be the crazy ones, right? Like Steve Jobs said. And, um, and that those two things can go together, right? Um, people have, you know, every one of these people that we're talking about were inspired in their action, inspired about their creation. And they just like, started moving towards that. Even when it didn't make sense, Matt was like, I'm going to start making YouTube videos in Portuguese because I can. And then I'm just going to record a new one every week. And pretty soon his Portuguese was better. Right. So, you know, driving, um, and taking that inspired action and not just sitting back and being a, being an observer right? They're in the driver's seat of their business. All those people chose to be in the driver's seat and not just let life happen to them, but to truly create um, freedom, create their business, create the environment and the culture they wanted to be a part of. And, you know, honestly, there's like a million stories why we shouldn't or why you shouldn't, right? there's a million victim stories that we could connect to, right? Um, but none of them, none of them will hold up. None of them are real. Those are illusions, right? 
the creator that you are and the truth about that is what will stand and what will set you apart and what will take you to the next space, right? Um, and that's the other thing that I noticed is these people were drivers and they weren't so attached to it being their plan that they weren't willing to pivot. You know, when we get so attached to certain processes and it has to be like this and like that, then, then we're just too attached to change and meet people where they are at as the world changes. Right. And this whole season um, I don't know how it's been for you, but it's totally been that wake up call for us of like, Hey, whatever attachments you had drop them all. And we've seen this with presidential over and over and over again. I mean, I could tell you Kelly Anderson, she, um, they put everything in storage units. They put backpacks on their back and they traveled Europe and they let go of everything. Cherie Burton, before she went presidential, they put everything in a 10 by 10 and um, moved to New Zealand for a while. And it helped them just let go of attachments. Um, Heather Matter yep. had a silver team that she was qualifying on. And <clears throat> they something happened and they wanted to leave her team and go to another team. And, um, and so, the surrender for her was letting go of this silver team. Like the entire team moved off of her front line and went to another team. And that surrender opened up space and was within two months. Yep. She had a new platinum leg and that took her to presidential. Just uncanny, miraculous, amazing. And we've seen that pattern over and over again. Like if we wouldn't have served, if we, if we wouldn't have sold our home, sold our van, put everything in a 10 by 10 and moved to Australia with five kids without having a place to stay. Like, I really feel like we would have been too attached um, to all of our stuff and things and the way things should be to even see what was next. And we came home presidentials, right? So to me, that um, that, you know, inspired con creation and driving as a creator and just being willing to surrender as well. So that, that is super key in this journey. So now we've, we've laid the foundation with a couple of those things. Anything else you want to share there before we open? Yeah. So you were talking earlier about how people, when they, when they take ownership of their team, when they take ownership of their business, um, there's something that happens in their mind and in their soul. Like they, they suddenly take a sense of stewardship and um, yeah, like they, they just treat their business differently. Mm -hmm. um, now there's something that happened four years ago that, um, has had a, a consequence that we didn't anticipate. When doTERRA took over the share success system and it became empowered success, I noticed that the number of team trainings that happened in the field were cut by about 75%. So there used to be massive uh, trainings around convention, around leadership. There were retreats, there were uh, boot camps, there were all kinds of of events that the leader would host if they had a sense of ownership. If they felt like this is my team and I'm responsible for, for the training, the inspiration, the, uh, the motivation of my team, then live events mm -hmm. are the best space to create that. <clears throat> but I think what happened was a lot of us, ourselves included, thought, oh, doTERRA has taken over training and so I guess we don't need to train our teams anymore. Mm -hmm. That was probably the biggest mistake any of us could have made. And so there was 
there was almost an unconscious transfer of ownership of who owns training. Mm -hmm. Now, just because they're the ones mailing out the live guide or mailing out the, the launch guide does not make them the stewards of our team, does not make them the owners of training the field. Amen. Like you and I own that. And it's time for us to take that back. Mm -hmm. So I am more committed than ever about um, repossessing <laughs> that stewardship. Um, we've, we've seen that the teams that have picked up on live events or never stopped doing live events. Or online events, just high quality training, mm -hmm. right? Yep. High vibe. Have, have kept the most momentum, mm -hmm. have had the most growth. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, doTERRA owners have um, made it a point to, to travel out and, and meet with people. Well, you know, obviously that we're following COVID guidelines. And, and so some of the meetings are only like five or 10 people, mm -hmm. but the owners are going to those trainings. And so they have sent a really clear message to us as, as the leaders, as the field, like, please meet with your people. Please start gathering wherever, whenever possible, because events are where big decisions are made. Mm -hmm. Events are where that, that belief can be transferred. Mm -hmm. And so did you want to talk to him about the event that we've been doing with Massive yeah. Success? So just before we break into your questions and where you want to take this, um, like this is one of the ways that we are training and I don't know how many of you have seen this, but we want like, this is our secret sauce. This is what we've done great at is we bring people into doTERRA. We've felt like we're supposed to be near here. So we take people on a tour of campus. We help them meet executives and other top leaders and really truly experience doTERRA. So, um, we have, these are the dates that we are doing for the rest of the year. Um, and they're all dialed into here. Um, and we've just had incredible experiences the last time. So we had Kirk Jowers and Dave Sterling month before last. And this last month we had um, Dr. O, he was incredible. I thought it was going to be a sleeper, but it was anything but a sleeper. It was amazing. He, he is totally changed. He's a world changer, not a medical guy, but this, this shows you the lineup of what we do in this Friday, Saturday event. And we're, you don't have to plug into this, right? But for us, it was like, Hey, we, we've got to do, we're seeing total conversion with people. And, um, and just to be clear, this is a prospecting event mm -hmm. for business prospects. Yeah. So that's, who's invited. Does that mean they can't be, uh, in doTERRA already? No, maybe they're just customers or maybe they were builders and have disengaged. Mm -hmm. Um, but 90% of the people who come to this event leave on fire. They leave with commitment, they leave with goals, they leave with a plan mm -hmm. and uh, accountability partner. It's just been a game changer. And so that's, that's what our invitation to you is, is to ask yourself, what can I do to transfer more belief mm -hmm. to more people? What can I do to help people touch the mothership? That's what we're trying to do here is have them, give them an experience with the owners, give them experience with leaders. Right, all of these things build belief in such a massive way. Um, there was one guy who came, um, <clears throat> and we've never had Dr. O talk before, but this guy came and Dr. O answered every question, resolved every concern that he had, and he had some big ones. Oh man! And it's just amazing how. Um, did you put a link in there? I will. It's just amazing how. Um, giving people the space to um, touch the mothership, you know, that's, that's what they're doing. They're, they're seeing with their eyes, they're walking through the campus. They're seeing this is not just a cute idea that their next door neighbor is doing. This is not just 
because because you and I, like all of us have been in long enough and we've had enough exposure that our belief is really, really high. Um, but for a brand new prospect who's thinking about sacrificing time, energy and resource, um, that's a big sacrifice, that's a big ask. And so, um, yeah, it's just been really powerful and having it be a, a, a regular event mm -hmm. has given it that much more momentum. It's been really fun to watch more leaders engage. And so obviously you're welcome. Your prospects are welcome. Mm -hmm. Here's a, a discount their, code. Their prospects. So this is the code for our team to use this grow code. And that takes it a hundred off. So it's 89 and then that covers the meals. And what we do, if your people haven't closed, then we close them with the natural solutions kit. And we have a business builder bag right there that they take right then with the business building guide and the essential life book and the essential emotions book and samples and da 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 like just this whole package right so they're closing on that first night if they haven't already closed and it's so amazing what happens in that atmosphere because there's serious people and and they're there together so that's just a practical application you know of maybe you're called to do something else but whatever it is, take ownership of it yeah, and drive it and do that thing well, right? How many people have we had attend this last time? We probably had 40. Um, this next time, I think we'll have 80. Um, so we recommend like uh, Lori Hayes, Lori and Joe Hayes. They are coming out. So Lori's coming out and bringing one prospect this time. And then she's, no, she's bringing two prospects this time. And then the next time she has a builder that's just more negative, you know, and she's like, I just want her to have this experience. And so she's doing that. And, um, you know, so it doesn't have to be this. If you're in Australia, you create what you want, right? We also have um, some of the online ones that we've done in the past. And those uh, videos are up there. It's a little bit different web address, but I'll share that with you here. But like those videos are up there from the past and you can just send the little specific link. I've sent Matt Hall's video from that page um, and Seth Risenmay's video from that page lots of times. So I'll show you that really quick so you can see uh what that looks like but it literally is just broken down to the different presenters yeah victoria i've shared your video from that page rocks and james just like whoever people are going to connect with or relate with these are the individual videos that made up the online ones that we did during the heart of covid you know and this is the whole whole one so the thing that that i, I want to cast a vision for you mm -hmm. is seeing yourself as a belief builder mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's something that some people intuitively have have that strategic mindset you know of just moving people from from where they are to to greater belief whether it's in the product in the opportunity that the company like mm -hmm. it's um that's the core of who we are as top leaders like we we're not sales guys you know our son just got enrolled in in doing summer sales he does pest control mm -hmm. and and i was like i was trying to think you know how how are we like him and what's different about what we do and leaders like by the time you get to blue and presidential you're a leader of leaders mm -hmm. And so, you know, his, my, your nephew mm -hmm. is the one that got Sam engaged and he's got a whole team of 40 guys out there doing summer sales. And that's, that's closer to what we do, right? He first, Natalie's nephew had to build belief enough for Sam to quit his job, um, buy a car, drive out to Kansas city and, and start knocking doors, like all 
summer long in the hot, muggy weather of Kansas City. And that's how much belief he built in our son, right? And that's exactly what we're doing when we're asking someone to engage as a salesperson in doTERRA. We're, we're building belief because they're not going to make bank right off the bat. This is not a per hour. There's no base. It's, it's all commission. And, and so it takes, it takes a lot of belief to, mm -hmm. to engage. So just ask yourself, what can I do to build the most belief? Where are my people with, with their belief? And, and that's what moves the needle. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We've been like thinking about these things for a while. So just sending them out to you to percolate. So what's coming up for you as you start taking this in? Um, what's coming up for you? I love seeing what Amy's bringing to the chat. Mm -hmm. It's so true. Oh man, have we erred to the side of duplication so mm -hmm. far that we have become um is vanilla the right you know just like yeah. so vanilla and bland that there's there's less of that attraction energy so what is it that attracts people to you and it's time to turn that back up that does not you know that doesn't have to do with your duplication right um we plug people processes duplicate and we can use similar processes, but we keep our magic and we reach people however we feel inspired to reach people. It's not an either or, right? Doesn't have to be, du what's that? I'll say, say something to what you said here and it's distilling it all, all of it. One of the things that I noticed, the thing that attracted me and people like me to doTERRA was, it, it makes you comfortable. You, you, you basically said it, it makes you comfortable with the unknown. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it throws you into flux. And, you know, you think of it as God's hand shaking the box a bit yeah. and making you feel really uncomfortable. And then you become addicted to that feeling and thrive anyway without that certainty, without, without that, you know. And I think that, I can speak for myself and I know that others will um, probably um, align with that as well as if I become comfortable and that's something I noticed about the founders as well then I become boring and there isn't that attraction I become closed and the comfort takes the the edge off that's just an observation I've made for years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's true isn't it amazing? I noticed like even at the presidential, it's like I was drawn to the people that were doing something new, not the ones that were in their comfort zone, not the ones that were in the same rut that they were five years ago. I wanted to talk to the ones that were creating right now. And so does everyone else. What else? I, I kind of just want to share that um, it's so funny. I had a call earlier this afternoon that I was on a panel and this was like almost the exact same topic. Hmm. Um, when I first started in China and I didn't know anybody and I was, as my little Kaylin says, do you boo? You know, I was just doing me, <laughs> right? I didn't, I didn't know you. I didn't know Kaylee or Elise or, Keely or all these people, right? I was just doing me and I was doing great. And then I came to corporate <laughs> and I was like, oh, I need to be like that. Oh, I need to be like that. I need to be like that. And I started, I got a VPN so I could start seeing things on YouTube and Facebook. And I started trying to be, I tried, tried to duplicate other people. And not just the process, like wasn't just about duplicating teaching classes. I was actually trying to duplicate styles and personalities. And I kind of lost who I was and I really kind of stalled out, you know, and I was really uncomfortable and way out of alignment when I was trying to 
I mean, no offense to Elise's class, she's knocking it out of the park clearly. But when I would try to memorize that script and do that class, it was not me. And I, my enrollments went down and I was clunky. And then I had the realization, I, I remember I was actually at your guys' house and I was sitting on the couch wondering how I was there. Like, how did I get here? <laughs> and huh. how, you know, and then I was thinking back, how did I get there? And it was when I was doing it my way. Mm -hmm. I was teaching classes and I was doing all the things, but I was me. Yeah. You know, and I remember trying to be Natalie rubbing oil on people. That is so <laughs> not me. I'm a germaphobe. Anybody who knows me knows I don't want to touch you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was really uncomfortable. And I was, it didn't work. It didn't work for me to be Natalie. Works great for Natalie. And so when I started to do you, boo, it uh, picked up again. So it's kind of in this conversation a bit. Wow. Love it. Thank you for sharing. That's so powerful. As we get more dialed in to who we really are and be true to that, you know, like Victoria, you've been in that process and, and, you know, we all know it. The attraction turns up. We were talking to PJ last night doing some mentoring and she's like, I'm, I'm doing 12 enrollments and not a month right now. And I'm not on any social media platform. And how is that happening? Because she's more dialed in on who she is than ever before. And it's rolling to her. And 45 enrollments in three months flows when we are in that place. Hmm. Hmm. Wow, so really fast. Um, Go Keisha. Yes, so I... I actually had an aha moment, like, how did I get where I'm at in this company just on Monday? Um, like, seriously thinking, like, what did I do? How did I use to share oils? Um, where <laughs> Maybe I should get my hair license and I can touch people again. And, you know, like, all this stuff's going through my head. And my husband, like, sat down and he's like, hun, I want you to okay, let's talk about hair license, you know, eight hours a day for a year and a half going to school, <laughs> nailed it down. Um, and he, he asked me, you know, what part of doTERRA um, has kind of steered me to where I've been stagnant, my whole um, upline, downline, I feel this sense of like stagnant, um, pause, no one has the, um, the happy energy that I used to feel, and you said that I'm responsible for my team. I can tell you I've fallen short um, on training, inspiring, and motivating. Wow. Um, this last year, I've been kind of knocked down by some leaders, and I know we've all been there, you know, where you your heart is there for them, but then they snap back at you because of insecurities that they're willing to address themselves or, mm -hmm. you know, maybe some stuff inside. How, how long do you keep pushing to try to bring that inner leader out in some people when they almost like want to walk away and shut you off. And I know I'm kind of rabbit trail and I'm all over the place. Uh -huh. um, but how long do you keep trying and trying and trying with these people? Because I'm going to be honest, I'm always a half, half uh, glass, half full personality. Uh -huh. um, very optimistic, but man, these people, um, can really drag me down and I don't want that to affect me anymore. Um, How many of you are feeling like what Keisha is speaking or have felt that recently? Like just <laughs> I'm not alone. You are so not alone. We're all like, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and Keisha, one of the things I think it's so important to recognize is, um, I, I hate I hate this awareness. I hate even saying it because part of me is like, I want everyone to go all the way. I want everyone to develop, but there is this thing called choice, right? And everyone gets to choose in and boy, doTERRA has been a lesson to me in that just choice piece. Like when I can see it for them, I want it more for them than they want it for themselves. And that's never gonna, that's never gonna happen. But one of the things that I, 
I, we've watched over time, right? So like 13 years this month, we have been watching this process. And every time before a new season of growth, I feel like there is just like a filtering process. So number one was the FDA. I feel like that was a huge filtering process. And, and there was a ton of people that were just like, I can't do this, right? And they get filtered out. And then we actually grew to a whole new level after that, had some massive growth. But then we have security breach and filter. People were filtered out. The people that stick around and that stay constant and da 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 go to a whole new level, whole new growth. Guess what? I feel like COVID has been a filter. And we are preparing for a new level of growth. But that has to, there has to be the weeding out. It can't ever come. That new level of growth can ever come. And, and I just want both. I want no weeding and, and the growth. But what we've seen is it just never happens like that. It's, mm. it's like any good harvest. Yep. God prunes the branches. It's the wheat and the tares. Like we, there's a filtering because we're going to higher levels and only those that are prepared can go there. And I love that. Thank you, PJ. Actually, where you said some people are allergic to heights, um, including myself at a point in this journey. Right. But, you know, as of Tuesday, my, my new mindset, and I could be totally off my rocker, but I am literally pretending I'm an executive again, and I'm pushing for elite because I feel like that's really when I work the hardest in this business is when my upline was like, okay, now we're pushing for 3000 over OV. And I'm like, yeah, that's a lot, you know, like, so I'm really trying to go back to that place. Um, and you know, I, leadership is hard. I think when, um, you go from gold to, to platinum, to diamond, to blue diamond, people look at you in a different light and you might not see yourself in that great light yet. <laughs> and so they put you in this perfection platform. And then when you fall short, they might check out. So I'm going to definitely look at this as pruning. Um, I believe in that totally that God is going to place people and um, maybe bring some of my people who are on fire to uh, Utah mm -hmm. and see if we can just create, but thank you guys so much for love this. It. And I love what, what you just said right there reminded me of convention too, right? What a gift convention is that we are having a live convention and whatever we can do to leverage that, to to wake people up again. And like Adish and Santoshi are saying like, yeah, it's, we're in the gap right now and holding the energy and asking for a huge level of patience or, you know, trying to just keep sharing that vision so people can see it still too. Right. It's that space in between, but this is where leaders are made. And this is where movement makers are made. And this is what's coming out of this season. Mm. What else? Guys, bring it. We're going to pack this in. What else is coming up for you? Thank you so much, Keisha. That was super real and so needed. I think one of the difficult things for us um, has been being able to communicate with people, actually getting through. It, it's it's weird. We, we always say there's so much noise around everyone that it's to get that message through to them and connect with them so that you can actually, you know, you know, love on them and expand them and grow with yeah. them. Um, you know, so they've had this before it's this noise, but we've got this filtering with communication at the moment. That's that we're, we're just trying to break through like we're, uh, everyone got into lockdown and um, you know, they became really insular um, and then we've got these issues with you know like people on Facebook are just not actually seeing it and not um, connecting with it so we're just trying to find those different ways of how we can actually connect with them again um, because they've just so many of them have shut down mm -hmm. um, but then we're like we're doing you know lots of different events and things and we're talking to people and like 
we run into people that are going, oh, you're not doing anything anymore. It's like, yes, we are. We're putting it all out there. We're emailing, we're sending messages, we're, you know, um, putting it up on Facebook and they're like, oh, I don't see any of that. And it's like, ah. Oh. Um, so it's that get breaking through. It, it was noise, but now it's just a buffer. Um, you know, it's trying to get to those people so that you can inspire them and get them fired up. Um, it's that's, that's our, well, one of our things at the moment, I think. Yeah. I think that is so real. How many of the rest of you are feeling that? I mean, I'm just like, how do you even play the game, right? With like what you're saying, PJ, the algorithm demons <laughs> playing, playing out there online. But what's the bigger play is the fear like a fog across the land, right? And um, to me, it's because those voices of fear whether they're coming from, you know, media or whatever else, people have started to tune into that. And so as you were talking, this is something I thought about the other day, but I, I love this, Dr. David Hawkins, his map of consciousness and what it reminds me of, because we have a strategy here. We don't have to play the game they're playing because like you're saying, we want to get up to this life supporting energy but when people are stuck down here in fear and I mean, how much fear and grief, oh, and apathy, like this is total <laughs> reality right now. And, and then even moving up into anger and pride over what even has gone down. And so I think there's so much of these emotions that it's requiring higher higher vibrations over here on this as far as consciousness goes and bringing that in and inviting in and um man courage is always the tipping point it always has been and i think it's going to take some creativity you know to be able to bring people in up here but when we see hey it's the fog of this. And how are we going to get a breakthrough? How do we inspire people with to take one act of courage that moves them up into this energy? And, you know, that's a whole new, I don't know. I, how are you guys doing it? What's, what are you finding there? Because the communication and reaching their hearts that's that's how we move move things not that i am a pro at this by any aspect at all and yet if we're vibrating more up at that joy mm -hmm. then even if we're attracting people who are a few levels lower at least they'll be at courage right like at least they'll be there so like every day, that's my target is where do I find joy? How do I stay in joy? How do I recover joy? How do I inspire joy? Like that's been my focus, right? Yeah. I think when you add the fear and the joy together, then they land at courage, right? <laughs> so this, that, that's the mag magic and we've got to be in that place and and more zipped up and more protected this is my word of the year is joy this yeah, year. can i share and this Please. may resonate with everybody but this was just me but joy um when i was in ministry in china it was women of joy mm -hmm. and it was jesus others you and it was like how do you stay happy in china <laughs> when you're an expat, right? And yeah. if you keep your eyes focused on Jesus, and I know that's a personal thing, um, and then focus on others, and then you, if you have it in that right order, you will have joy. Mm. So I just love this word. It's I have a, a lot of joy in my house going on. Wow. Jesus, others, you. Joy. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That order is super key. And I think right now we've got to go back to helping our people, right? And doing that in healthy ways so that we can experience the, the fruits will come, right? We'll be taken care of, but we help enough 
other people get what they want. And Natalie, I, I just saw something in the map of consciousness. We've used yeah. this for years in our own training, our, our own reading as well. Mm -hmm. Have a look at this. It takes pride. It takes courage to overcome pride. Mm. It takes neutrality to overcome anger. Wow. It takes willingness to overcome desire, acceptance to overcome fear. So far it's all true. It takes reason to overcome apathy, which we can remember, or grief, mm -hmm. which we can remember when we're working on our own grief, not with others. It takes love to overcome apathy, another truism. Mm -hmm. It takes joy to move past the guilt mm -hmm. and it takes peace to overcome shame and then enlightenment is yeah i've worked with this for years i've never seen that before wow maybe when we're helping people you know oh she's so um, you know she's so apathy australia is is capital a for apathy australia is dreadful our apathy is shocking mm -hmm. but underneath it is fear and grief and guilt and shame it's all wrapped mm -hmm. into apathy mm -hmm. but if often i think wow how can i help this person pass the apathy and if you look there the answer is in wow. there hmm. wow i never saw it that way either huh <laughs> That's amazing. It's another way to use it as a tool. Mm -hmm. That's super useful, right? Because we stay up in this strategy. We can, we have, we can do, um, we can address any other issue. Yeah. I mean, I don't know where that came from. Can you share in the image, image in the chat? Um, yeah, we'll share that image. Fortified faith, love that, Carolyn. Healing. Um, yeah, this is where, right? What what is the world trying to destroy within us? Our our faith in our own leadership ability, faith in our ability to lead a movement. Like that's that's what the world wants to destroy. But boy. Man, there is nothing like um, just believing, right? And choosing this upper upper path, right? It's it's a choice. It's a choice. What else? And and we'll get this file and share it in the chat because it's a yummy one. We use this in a presentation, and it seems like. You know, whenever I have mentoring, I have a few slides up, like the belief summit and this, and now I'm going to use it in a whole new level. Whole new level. It's awesome. Hmm. What else? Can I take us home? Yeah. Okay. Um. Friends, you are meant to lead. You are here today because you are meant to lead this movement. And we are all being refined. We are all being um, made more of the leaders that we are truly meant to be. And there's no way around it than going through the process. And I have to remind myself, like going through the burn with Max and the healing and everything, um, I love the quote, um, what is to bring light must endure burning, Viktor Frankl said. And um, whether you're getting out of the burning or you're still in it, um, it's, it's part of the plan. We're being totally refined and we're in this amazing process to become who we're meant to become. And there are people waiting for you to lead them into more of who they are and what a gift that we get to live this every day that we get to do this that we get to bring this oh my goodness is it the best right it's the best and we get to live it and we get to do it and we're just so excited for you to meet those that you are meant to lead
There are so many more out there. Um, ones that will match you right now, right? There were certain leaders that matched you when you came in in the beginning and the vibration that you were at. And right now you are at a very different vibration. So can I just reassure you that it's not going to be the same experience that it was in the beginning, right? I kind of had to talk myself down off a ledge. I cannot have any more Doja children. They are too time consuming and they are da da da, right? All of this story, I just said, oh, be quiet. I'm a different person now and I'm attracting different people now. And that's where you are, friends. So um, you, can, you can do this. You are right here. It's the right time, it's the right place, and you've got it in you. So take the time, drop in, be inspired, do you. Um, try those crazy thousand things, whatever it takes um, to get there. All of those things will be useful as long as you use them to take you closer to becoming who you really are, right? Then you have the magic of being you. Because wherever you are, there you are. You cannot get away from you. No matter how far or fast you run, there's no getting away from you. But you get that gift. At the end of the day, you get that gift. We love you. Um, we know you've got this. I'll ping you when we're doing our next call because it didn't work out just like exactly a month away. So we'll ping you on that. Do, you know, our challenge is to you do that presidential vision board right now. Be seeing it, be creating it. Um, if you're already at presidential or close, I'm gonna invite you to start visualizing double so that your presidential gets strengthened. Remember how important it is to look ahead, right? And I don't care where things are right now. If you feel like, oh my gosh, all my silvers are premieres, it doesn't matter put it up there, visualize it, bring this new energy in, bring this new leadership in, stand in the amazing impressions that you have and that guide your business. And um, we'll see you in Oman. Yeah. We, we love you so much. We're praying for you. We send all that love and light your way, wherever you are, whichever corner of the world. Okay. See you next time. Lots of love.